right, first, uh, we got to talk about your AMD results before we go into Xilinx, because it, it's not, it's rare that I see record revenue growth 56%. It's rare that I see accelerated revenue growth for a company your size. Uh, also, a company that has its own destiny, multi-year destiny. How are you capable of coming up with something that no other chip maker is doing? Well, look, uh, Jim. First of all, we are, um, you know, very, very excited today. Um, you know, lots of uh, lots of excitement. Uh, we had a very strong third quarter. You know, I think the, the the results speak for themselves. I think we saw a significant growth on the top line. We saw, you know, we beat on the bottom line. Uh, when you look across the markets, you know, these are the the most exciting markets. So, um, strong PCs, uh, strong gaming, uh, strong data center, and um, you know, we see that uh, extending into the fourth quarter. Um, and that's why we were able to raise our full year guidance uh, for the year. So we'll now grow over 40 percent um, on a year over year basis. And, and I think it's really the culmination of all of the things that we've been doing in the strategy around, um, you know, building great products, uh, working deeply with the most important customers out there and, and being in the right um, market segment. So, um, you know, very, uh, very happy with how uh, the, uh, the company's performing and uh, most importantly, you know, the strength of our product roadmap. All right. Well, this begs the question, Lisa. I tell you that when I saw these results, my first reaction was 90 to 100. That's where the stock would be if it weren't for Xilinx. So how do we defend the Xilinx deal? By, uh, is it something that is immediately accretive, something that expands your total addressable market? Because otherwise, shareholders would have been bountifully rewarded by the numbers that you reported. Well, the way I think about this is, Jim, you know that I'm always in for the long term. Uh, you know, we built our um, sort of foundation, sort of the, the base AMD business on just, you know, thinking, you know, very carefully about what's going to happen in the industry over the next five years, right? So that's how we decided to uh, lean into data centers. That's the strength of the PC market, the strength of the gaming market. You know, what Xilinx brings is, you know, really very additive um, to the AMD model. So, uh, you know, first of all, it is immediately accretive um, upon closing. You know, it brings, uh, you know, significant margin expansion as well as uh, profitability and free cash flow generation. But more importantly than that, um, we really believe that together we can define the future of high performance computing. And, you know, I'm a very ambitious person. Um, it's all about, you know, what we can do to transform the industry as well as, you know, participate in, in driving sort of the next phase of computing. And that's what Xilinx is all about. Um, it's a fabulous company. I would say it's one of the best companies in the industry. It's a very, um, you know, unique uh, capabilities. And we are uh, so complementary. And, and you really see that uh, when we think about um, the product portfolios, um, the market segments that we're in. Um, and then culturally, we're also, um, you know, very, uh, very aligned as well. So um, it's a very, very good day for AMD. And uh, we're very excited about what, um, you know, we can do together with Xilinx. I know you're quite familiar with Mr. Peng, who uh, runs Xilinx. When he was on Mad Money recently, he talked about automotive, broadcast consumer, wired and wireless, data center, but uh, uh, obviously industrial. And I'm wondering how these fit in uh, with a company that I think has m made great advancement in data center and obviously owns the PC market at this point. Are these markets and markets ones that, you're, that you want to be in? Do you want to be in automotive? Yes, so um, absolutely. So when you look, um, our, our base AMD, you know, TAM or market opportunity is about 80 billion, right? Great markets, big markets, um, you know, they, they move, uh, they move uh, you know, quickly and well. Uh, when you add Xilinx, what you add is, uh, first of all, we're both still very focused on the data center. So that's the number one priority um, of the company. Uh, but they bring, you know, a great, um, you know, communications, uh, you know, 5G um, capability. Uh, they also uh, bring, you know, as you said, automotive. Um, that's a market that we haven't been in, but that market needs um, our technology as well. Um, so just in, you, know, um, you know, the telecom space, uh, you know, we think there's an additional $5 billion of, you know, CPU opportunity for us that's, you know, largely untapped. Um, and so combined, we'll have, you know, $110 billion TAM, uh, which is um, a lot of opportunity to go after. And, and the key is, you know, both companies are operating extremely well. I mean, uh, you know, Xilinx is the market leader. They've been growing market share. Uh, we have a very strong portfolio, and we have also been growing market share. And you put two winning teams together, and um, you really have, uh, you know, one of the best teams in the industry. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.